Hey everybody, it's Eugene Lee Show here and welcome to Click3D. This is the program where we talk about photogrammetry and how you can use your digital camera to create really compelling 3D models. Now today what I thought I would do is cover a couple of ways that you can repair different types of surfaces. And the fact is that photogrammetry is not useful in every single situation. And so oftentimes when there's a problem with textures, and that seems to be one of the common areas that causes problems, well, you end up with noise, you end up with garbage, and you need a way to fix it. So there's a couple of scenarios you can find yourself in, and one of them has to do with glass. And so glass is a real problem for photogrammetry simply because it's reflective. And depending on where you are with the camera, as you're moving around from one place to the other, well, the reflections follow you. And so you can think about the photogrammetry algorithm, the SIFT algorithm, it stands for Scale Invariant Feature Transform, as a way of picking a pixel on a photograph and then looking around the neighborhood and looking for certain types of features. Now if you go to another image, which is somewhat similar, and it's the same object or whatever, if you end up around the same pixel and in the same neighborhood, you should end up with the same kind of distribution and pattern. That's kind of the basics of it. But in the case of a reflective surface, what ends up happening is, as you're moving around, well, the reflection is moving. So that means that the pixel and the items around it are just going to be moving. So they're never the same, and it causes a lot of problems. Now, another surface that causes a problem is a wall, like a flat, colored wall. And that's for a different reason. It's not because it's reflective, it's because there's no commonality between the points all around. Or actually, I should say, they're always the same. And so it can't find any differences between one part of the wall and another part of the wall. So today, what I thought we would do is I'm going to take some photos of the glass and I'm going to show you a way that you can repair it using a 3D modeling program and then um, exporting the model from the photogrammetry package into the 3D modeling program, doing some fix up and then bring it, bringing it back in and then retexturing everything. And I'll do the same thing with walls on the inside because that can be kind of useful. So let's get to it and I'll show you what I mean. So you can see here that as I'm moving around the glass, the reflection is moving. And so that causes a huge problem for photogrammetry. So uh, anytime you have a car or something shiny like this, well, the reflection is just gonna move and that's just not gonna work with photogrammetry. Okay, so I'm here in 3DF Zephyr and what we're gonna try to do is process the images. And I did in fact go out and I took a number of photographs of the uh, the brick wall and the glass. And I didn't do anything too crazy. I didn't get up close, so I'm not gonna get a lot of high detail. Uh, the real point of this is just to show that the resultant mesh that you get on glass is almost always extremely, extremely noisy, even though the point cloud might look like it's okay. So it requires a bit of repair and a bit of touch up um, whenever you're doing a uh, photogrammetry model. So uh, I may even show this a couple of ways on how you can improve the meshed model in the end. But uh, really what we're going to be doing is processing the project normally and then uh, doing some things with importing and exporting and, and repairing in other programs. So let's get started with this. I've got a bunch of photographs and I'm just going to drag and drop them inside here. And I'm just going to blast through this and I'm going to choose general and fast. So I'm not going to go too crazy with uh, the Zephyr here. And actually, you know what? I won't let you guys wait. I'm just going to go ahead. I'll do, do the normal processing and I'll hit pause while this is going. And then I'll just unpause it when it's finished processing. Okay, that didn't take too long at all. So if I scroll through here, it looks like every photo was reconstructed. So that's great. I'm going to hit finish. So Right off the bat, I always look at the sparse point cloud. Now, you'll see it's off on an angle here, so it didn't know uh, which way was down or which way was flat, which is fine for now. I'll, I'll deal with this later. But you can tell right away the glass has a lot of problems, right? There's not as many sparse points reconstructed as you can see around where the brick is or even on the edge here of the concrete uh, walkway. So we're going to work with this for now and just see what we get. And I'll process the dense point cloud, and then I'm going to make some adjustments. I'm going to uh, level this and everything else. I could do that now, but let's just go ahead and uh, continue with the process. I'm going to go with a dense reconstruction and I'm going to go with the default as normal and I'm going to hit run and I'm just going to press pause and come back when this is done again. 
So we've just finished the dense reconstruction and you can see it here now and obviously it's off on an angle whatever uh, we'll fix that um, so why don't we do that first let's let's get rid of that I'm actually I'm going to turn off all these cameras and I'm going to level this thing very quickly so uh, oh, wrong one let me do this one and what I'm going to do is just three clicks okay so that kind of levels it down and i think i want to straighten it out too because it looks like it's off on an angle i just want to square it up just make it look a little bit prettier uh, i think it'll look nicer that way so let's see and it might be easier to work with when we bring it into the other program so the yeah the front here looks pretty good it looks fairly lined up so i'm just going to hit okay there and it's sitting on the bottom there which looks pretty good so let's have a look at the glass and see what it looks like and you know from far if you look at it hey you, you know you'd be thinking hey that looks fantastic or whatever but you can start to see evidence over here uh, in this area that it just it looks kind of noisy and as we get closer you'll see that the glass is going to have all kinds of uh, noise uh, in front of it and behind it and it's a little bit denser here where there were the shades that dropped down uh, but again quite noisy so it's gonna have a really really hard time trying to figure out where the surface is there whereas you know here on the brick uh, you can see that it's it's a bit cleaner like it's a bit crisper and there's not a lot of noise on there and like I said, I could have done a better job here of uh, getting closer and more details, but that's not the purpose of this particular exercise. So I'm going to uh, just limit the uh, reconstruction here to just the area that we need. So I'm going to push this over a little bit like that. Just get that end. And this is a, a bounding box. So whatever is inside this bounding box is what will get reconstructed. It's not going to reconstruct anything uh, outside of this. So I'm just going to push this off a bit like that and i think that is going to be okay looks lined up okay let's leave that there so the next process so the next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to demonstrate what the mesh would look like if we just proceeded forward from here so we're going to just make a regular mesh and use all the images general default is great um, actually hmm, let me think about that I may even simplify this a bit um, just because it's gonna be a really dense mesh and for the purposes of, of what we're doing a fast mesh would be fine uh, it's still gonna take a little bit to crunch through so um, I'm gonna let this go just for a minute or two or, and uh, I'll be back once it's complete let's have a look at what we got let's see what this mesh looks like so right off the bat from far here um, not too bad but let's get in and have a look and you'll see that there's a lot of waviness and it might be a little difficult to see what I'm going to do is I'm going to strip off the color because it's a little bit deceiving when you look at it and you'll see even here there was even a hole so I'm just going to look at it like this and now you'll see that there's an absolute mess over here um, where the uh, the glass should be right a real disaster up here could have been better and even when I took the photos this part here could have been if I had um, photograph this uh, a little bit better that would have been fine but the real goal here was really just to look at the the glass and and see that you know there's obviously some issues going on here so what we're going to do is we're going to try and repair this and we could do this a couple of ways one is we can delete this data inside of 3df zephyr another way is to just um, e edit this uh, or excuse me ex export this out Another way would be to export this out and then what we'll be able to do is uh, edit it in uh, another program. I'll probably use 3D Studio Max, um, but uh, yeah, you'll see that there's some difficulties here. But I won't get too, uh, too wrapped up here right now with this. Let's just go ahead and uh, export this out. That's pretty simple. Just got to go to export. Let's export the mesh. Uh, let's do it as an OBJ, I think. We could even do FBX, but let's do OBJ and use these defaults here. And we're going to export this to uh, the uh, glass exported. How about that? Glass exported. And I'm going to go save. All right. And oh yeah, no spaces. That's fine in the name. And it's going to export this out. Okay. So now let's go have a look and see what it looks like. Since I'm going to be looking at this in 3D Studio Max, that's what I'm going to be using to delete some polygons and then uh, stitch in a, uh, a plane. Uh, I'll just look at it in here. So let's just see if this works. I'm going to import the mesh. And uh, it is, let me just do it by date. It should be this one right here. I'm going to open this up. 
And looking at the settings, okay, flip ZY, I don't want to do that. I want to keep that the same. And I'm just going to import this as is, and hopefully it should uh, come in okay. All right, let me maximize the window here. All right, not too bad. So if I look at this, so you can see it's just an absolute mess. And if I go to the front view, yeah, I'm in wireframe. Let me just go to default shading. Yeah, this obviously needs some uh, some help here. Okay, so what we're going to do is delete um, these, uh, these, uh, windows here, the glass, and we'll leave everything else kind of intact in between. So the way that we're going to do this is we're going to have to, um, obviously select this and I'm just going to go up to the modify tab. I'm not really going to get too deep into what I'm doing here with 3d studio max, but basically what I'm going to be doing is making selections, um, across here. Now I'm just pulling on a thing. I need to do selections, excuse me. And what I'm going to do is just make a rectangular selection like that. And it selects all of the polys. I'm going to delete those. And I'm just going to keep doing the same thing in between here. So uh, basically something like, oh, something similar. And I'm not going to make it, I'm not going to go too crazy here. Like that, that's fine. I'm going to do the same thing up here. Try to make it about as equal as possible for each one of these. And close enough. And then I'll do another one down here and go up and you see this one is a real mess. So, um, let's say like that. Okay. So what I've done is I've just wiped out all the glass. Now what I want to do is add a plane. I want to add something that's really nice and flat. That's going to be nice and clean. So I'm going to do that by going to the uh, crate tab, clicking on plane, and I am going to just kind of click and drag in this direction, something like that, more or less. Okay. So that's, that's what it's done. I need to take a look at this to make sure that it's not, uh, it's obviously offset. So I got to line it up as best as I can. And let me go back here and make sure that it's, there's no gaps or anything. So if I go back, yeah, you can see there's some gaps or there's also some noise. Let me see how far back that would be. Yeah, that wouldn't be too bad. That's kind of close. I think, let me see. That's too much. Eh, I think something like this is going to be okay. Well, I have to convert this and I'm going to combine it. So, um, what I'm going to do is take this plane and I'm going to convert it to an editable poly and I'm going to attach it, make it part of the overall mesh. So I'm going to take the polygon, I'm going to attach and I'm going to attach this part here and you see that it just turned the same color. So, um, eh, obviously up here, I could have done something a little different. Maybe we could have tweaked that a bit. Uh, but let's just leave it like this for now and see what happens. Okay. And the other software. So, that's it. We've added a plane. Uh, we've made an adjustment here. Um, and let's just uh, get it back. Actually, I don't like the way this looks. Let me, let me back up here. Let me go back. I'm going to tweak it just a tiny bit more. I need to go back just a tiny bit like that. Okay. Yeah, let's try that. And then uh, see if that's any better. That's a poly. Click that. Click on that. Attach. Okay, there we go. Now I feel better about that. So we're just going to export this back out. So I'm just going to go file export this mesh. We're going to export it as uh, an OBJ. I need to get back to where I, where I was before. There we go. And I'll call this uh, glass repaired. Uh, that's an FBX, but I'm going to do an OBJ right now. There we go. OBJ. I'm going to do glass repaired and save. Let's replace the old file. And this is okay. The settings are fine. And this will start writing out here. So, uh, that's the, the vertices. These are the normals and these I think are the textures, quads, triangles. Okay. And it's done. All right. Let's switch back to Zephyr and then we're going to import this mesh inside and retexture it and see how it works. So we're back in Zephyr and now what we have to do is do an import of what we just exported from 3d studio max. So I'm going to import the model and you'll see here that we have, uh, if I do this by date, oops, let me go the other way. All right. Glass repaired OBJ. That's the one I'm going to import it. And once it brings it in, it should put it into the, yeah, there it is. So that's it there. Now I have two meshes that are on, so you can see here, all right, I've got two. So I'm going to shut the original one off and this is what I'm going to work with right now. So this is called glass repaired unstructured. So, um, unstructured is, you can think of it as just, it's just kind of a mesh that doesn't have a lot of information tied to it. So, um, the camera positions right now that are shown or that were created from photogrammetry, uh, the original mesh, 
Okay, this one was structured, so it knows which camera, where the, the camera positions are relative to the mesh and everything else, but this one it doesn't. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, hey, we want you to make this structured. So we'll, and we will clone it and structure it. And let's do that. And it shouldn't take too long at all to do that. And once it's structured, okay, so this is the unstructured. Let's turn on the structured. It's this guy right here. Now what we can do is we can apply texture to this mesh. And I can see there's a little bit of a gap there. So I could have probably bought, brought that a little bit more forward. Yeah, probably could have. Actually, it's on an angle, so I could have tweaked that a bit better. But I think you'll get the idea here nonetheless. So let's do that. Let's just go ahead and go workflow. We're going to create a textured mesh. And now here it says glass repaired too. That's what we've got here. Perfect. Let's go next. General. Yeah, just the default texture would be fine. I'm going to let this run. Let's let this cook and let's see what happens. Now, if the glass is offset, so it's not perfectly in line where the original glass should have been, it's going to look weird. Okay. So there's going to be some textures that are misaligned or whatever, but at least from a geometry standpoint, we've already repaired that a little bit and it looks much better. And, uh, you know, now we can go forward and do some other things, but let's see how the textures project. And when that's done, I'll come back and we'll have a look. So we have a textured mesh and it's just not turned on right now because I had it off. So if you go here now, now you'll see that it's much better. Now, because I had, I, I think I mentioned this, because the glass was pushed a little bit forward or back, it's going to reproject incorrectly in some places. However, if you look at the actual mesh though, okay, it does have color now. Um, you can see these, uh, these little metal pillars here, whatever need to be fixed too. But this is a way that you could fix up the uh the mesh here and make it look a little bit better um you know whenever you get these these uh surfaces that are sort of going crazy on you and that sort of thing so yeah uh that's the basics so we have a textured mesh and uh it's not looking too bad at all and now you can see that the reprojection here is a little bit off simply because uh, the glass was pushed a little bit more forward or backward or whatever so you do need to find a decent spot for it but uh, from a geometry standpoint it does look a little bit better and you still get you know much cleaner uh data here and we do still have a fairly dense mesh. Like if we just look at the wireframe, you'll see these ones are very, very loose. Uh, they're just like big, big patches, which is fine because, um, you know, it's going to look at the texture on there and it should look just fine. So uh, let me take that off. Anyway, that's how you can repair glass or even other types of surfaces that are relatively flat. But you can also do more complex geometry. Now, it takes a bit more time because you need to do the modeling and, you know, um, you need to have a really good estimate of the surface and the geometry. But this is absolutely possible. Thanks a lot, folks, for watching Click3D, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.